on this day. January 8th, 1297. Francois Grimaldi, disguised as a monk, led his men to capture the great fortress protecting the Rock of Monaco. It was this action which led to the establishment of the Principality of Monaco and the long-lasting power of his family. The Grimaldis were a family that descended from a man called Grimaldo, wouldn't you know? He was a Genoese merchant and statesman around the time of the Crusades, the early Crusades. It was during the Crusades that the Grimaldis became quite wealthy. They provided many ships and supplies to the armies. And after this, his descendants would lead maritime expeditions around the Mediterranean, Black Sea, North Sea, and they became one of the wealthiest and most powerful families in Genoa. Now, during this time, Italy was riven by two rival gangs, basically. The Guelphs and the Ghibellines. The Guelphs and the Ghibellines, one side supported the emperor and his secular power. They believed that he, had, he was ahead or above the pope. And the other was the other way around. They supported the pope and his power instead. And as is always the case, these two different sides ended up on, the, on different sides of every argument, every issue, kind of like political parties today, except that they would be, have violent confrontations in the streets. It wasn't just Genoa, it was Florence, it was Milan, it was all over Italy. Wars were fought, uh, the equivalent of villages going out and beating the living daylights out of the next village happened. There was violence in the streets, uh, people getting stabbed. It's kind of like Romeo and Juliet sort of thing, Guelph and Ghibli. And they just would never uh, come together. And so everywhere that they, where they had Guelphs and Ghibli's, which was everywhere, you would have one side trying to get control over a city and the other side trying to stop them because they wanted to have control over the city. And this was no different in Genoa. The Grimaldis were Guelphs. And so between them and a few other Guelphs, they had a little bit of an alliance going. They ended up losing to the Ghibellines and having to flee Genoa and take refuge in the ca their castles and fiefs outside of the city. Just because a city is a republic does not mean that it's great and good to not want and desire titles and lands outside of the city. It's always been the way. Once you have money, you want something more than money. You want titles, you want lands, castles, because that will ensure that your name and family goes on. And this was around the time when the Grimaldis took Monaco. Now, Monaco was a small little fort on a rock, a prominent, a prominent rock into the sea, had a good harbour on one side, and it was a very good place from which to attack or to defend Genoa. So, it went back and forth from Guelph hands to Ghibelline hands, and on January the 8th, Francois Grimaldi, disguised as a monk, managed to con his way into the castle, saying that he was needed shelter for the night. He ended up opening the doors to the castle, his men came in, they stormed it, took it over, and since then the Grimaldis have ruled Monaco. Once 
Francois Grimaldi was in control of Monaco. People in Genoa were, they allowed him to keep it. And he ended up with the title Prince of Monaco. But this happened quite a lot with a lot of different people. And so it wasn't that unusual. What is unusual is that Monaco survived to this day. And it barely did. It was seized by France during the French Revolution. It was occupied by Germany in the Second World War. And throughout the middle, late middle and Renaissance times, it was a scene of various battles, and any kingdom could have taken it at any time if they had wanted to. It just suited them more to leave Monaco be. Monaco also, well, the Grimaldis, were very adept at sucking up to the big power at the time. For a time, they sucked up to the crown of Aragon. And Aragon was quite happy to be, have Monaco there as a thorn in the side for France. When France became powerful, they started sucking up to France. And many princes of Monaco ended up living at Versailles. They had a French peerage, and so they were pretty much French. There was many areas on the edges of France, which were not quite officially, legally a part of the Kingdom of France, but they were very influenced by it. Their lords would be at court in, in Paris or Versailles, and for many of these petty lords, it was much better being in Paris or Versailles, because back then, a place like Monaco, a little castle with a couple of sheep herders around, it's not that interesting a place to be. Whereas Paris, the glitz, the nightlife, the massive swell of humanity and learning and fun. Who wants to be in some little cattle shed down at the south coast of France? Many people nowadays, true, but not back then. But after the French Revolution and the, the Congress of Berlin, uh, Congress of Vienna, sorry, Monaco amazingly survived. They had lost lands, but they had survived, barely. And it was in the 19th century that one of the princes decided they needed to modernize, and open up, and start making money because it was a barren rock with a couple of sheep on the hills. And they touched upon the idea of a casino. And we all know where that went. We all know how successful it was. And so today, the Grimaldis still reside on the rock of Mar Monaco ruling this little sliver of land, which is now one of the wealthiest places in the world. I bet you anything Francois Grimaldi did not think that, that would be the case back in 1297. If you like these videos, come back for more tomorrow. Subscribe, like, and leave a comment.